But I'm going to title our message this morning, The Mistaken Identity of Jesus. The Mistaken Identity of Jesus. He was mistaken for a gardener. Today, people mistake him, period. But our text begins, Jesus had been crucified, had been placed in the tomb, and now we're seeing what follows this with his followers. We begin John chapter 20, verse 6. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulchre, or the tomb, and he seeth the linen clothes lie, the clothes that Jesus had had on. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. They didn't understand that yet. Then the disciples went away again under their own home. But Mary, Mary Magdalene, stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain, past tense. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord. I know not, know not where they have laid him. When she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, if you've carried his body, Tell me where that thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Mary Magdalene said, I'll take his body. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. And she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master, this is my Lord. When she had previously thought that he was the gardener. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto the Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. It was a happy woman, happy lady, because she indeed was the first one that our Lord appeared to after that he indeed risen, had risen from the dead. Again, this is the record that our Lord gave us of the resurrection of the greatest person that ever walked on this earth and his name is still Jesus but he had been crucified had been placed in the tomb and it had been three days and three nights and now we find this young woman named Mary Magdalene uh, here with him. 
Now, who was Mary Magdalene? Jesus had cast out seven demons out of Mary Magdalene. Brother Enrique was telling us about coming across some uh, demon-possessed folks and knocking on the door. She had had seven demons, Mary Magdalene. And the Lord had cast those demons out. And here she is in the garden, the garden place where the tomb was. But why did Mary suppose that he was a garden? Well, we'd say, first of all, she was in the garden. So it would reason that if someone being there, especially that was alive, Jesus was dead, she thought. Maybe because of the tears in her eyes, she didn't recognize who our Lord was. Because she truly loved him. Her lack of understanding, if you look back at verse 9, for as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. He had told them that it was necessary that he die and that he would defeat death. That he would come forth from the grave. And still, Mary Magdalene had not understood that part of the message. Mary loved Christ in sincerity, though she thought him to be dead. And we'd say she had reason to love him because he had cast those demons and restored her soul. And she had happiness within because of Jesus. And here she's saying to the gardener, she thought the gardener, she said, well, where have you placed his body? And I'll take his body. That's admirable of her, wasn't it? That she wanted to retrieve the body of the person that had cast the demons from her. But Mary was not alone in thinking that Jesus was still dead. The disciples look back again at verse 9. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Jesus had spent his whole ministry with them. They had heard him say that it was necessary that he die, but he would defeat death. And still, they had not understood that message. Matter of fact, two of the, uh, the scripture says mistook Jesus on the road to a mess. Uh, they were walking to Emmaus and, and a stranger appeared to them he said what are y'all talking about and they said art thou a stranger in Jerusalem and you hadn't heard what's happened they've crucified the one called Jesus but when our Lord uh, spoke with them further, they realized it says their hearts burned within them. Although they did not understand it, him nor what had happened. But one by the name of Thomas said to the other disciples, I'll not believe I got to see it with my own two eyes. And I got to feel, make sure it's him. Jesus had said, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. And that would be the case of you and I. We've not seen our Lord. But we know him by faith, don't we? But 2,000 years ago, Mary Magdalene supposed him for the gardener. Thought that he was still dead. The disciples also thought him still to be dead. 
But now they see his tomb, the body is missing. And later on, he appeared to all of them. As a matter of fact, he appeared to over 500, the scripture says, before he, he ascended back into heaven. What's that got to do with us? The mistaken identity of Jesus. Our modern generation like to think of Jesus as still being dead. Having still been in the tomb. They like to think of Jesus as someone like the gardener. Why? Because if Jesus is dead, he's not who that he told us he was. Means they still have to face him. So they just simply declare that God dead. Another reason is because they're living like he's dead. Like there's no God. Or that he only has the ability of the gardener. Our young generation, as you've observed the last few days, any of you had the news on yesterday, you saw some of the video last night even of those people marching in the streets, and I'll use the word all kind of freaks. Claiming they're proud, they call it the pride parade. They're proud to be against God. That's basically what they're saying. Folk, there's no pride about being a sinner, and we're all sinners. But there's no pride, especially in being a sexual deviant. And that's what it is. And you can tell them I said so. But they know so. The Bible says so. Today's Chronicle is a big write-up, a whole section, of a Reverend Laura Mayo. Wrote an article contrary to the Bible. And it's saying the Bible does not condemn that style of life. Look, I don't know what Bible she's found. But it's not the one that the Lord gave us, the King James Version. You see where I'm coming from? They don't understand that they're going to stand before Him one day and their every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that He is God. And the sad part of it is He's going to say to some, depart from me, I never knew you, ye that work iniquity. Every sin present that was in Sodom and Gomorrah that we have record of is current as we live now. Every sin. The Bible says God is not a respecter of persons. He's not a respecter of nations. But a nation that rejects God. And in your face still. God's not going to tolerate. God's not going to put up with it. You can trust me. The Bible does say he's long-suffering. He's not willing that any should perish, but rather that all should come under repentance. I don't know how many of you keep up with the news. Maybe we shouldn't, but yesterday's news and Friday's news, the House of Representatives just took a vote. What they were voting on was the rights 
of transgenders. Two hundred and thirty six to one hundred and seventy three it carried. One hundred percent total of Democrats all voted. Now get this. One hundred percent of them and eight Republicans came over with those Democrats and voted that if someone comes along, some boy, and he feels like, well, maybe he's a girl. That he can play on the girls' volleyball team or basketball team. He can play in track or he can box, whatever. As long as he thinks he may be transgender. And they voted to prove that. Two hundred and thirty six once again to one hundred and seventy three. I heard some some of the lady athletes were opposed to it because they didn't think it was fair now because you got a man his body is made different than a woman. And he's gonna be in the same competition with the girls. Our government voted that. Sad, isn't it? That's where we are, folks. People have forgotten that God is God. He's not a gardener. But you know, the sad part of it is, y'all better get your steel-toed shoes on. Some of God's children are living like there is no resurrection and living like that God is dead. According to their lack of dedication, lack of devotion, they're causing others to stumble over them into the pits of hell. Folk, I don't know if your mind can grasp what hell really is. It's eternal. It's unchangeable. Throw your clocks away because there's no clocks in eternity. Forget it. There's no end. There's no end to suffering. Endless. No reprieve. See if your mind can grasp that a moment. God put us here to keep people from that place. He sent His Son to keep people from that place. God doesn't send anybody to hell. He sent his son to the cross to pay for our sins. He never sent anybody. And he said, whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. Oh, God not dead. His schedule is right on time. Sometimes we get ahead of him a little bit. Lord, come on, take care of this thing. But he'll take care of it, trust me. In his own time. In his own way. The write up in the paper this morning and yesterday, trying to justify all these people in these marches, saying that it wasn't sin or it wasn't wrong to do those things. My friend, you haven't read the Bible.
But the same book which says that God's son died says also that he rose again. And the same spirit which convicts you of your sins says that he's alive. If you will, look back at your paper down at the bottom of the page, Acts 2, 24. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of the grave. Folk, the grave could not hold him. Because he is God. He's the one that made you and me in his own image. He loved you enough that he died that you wouldn't have to die. And folks, there's no greater love than that a man would lay down his life for his friends. He's not willing that any should perish but that all should come into repentance. Our generation has rejected him as a whole. And that's what's so sad. If you will, the very bottom of your page there, John 12, verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. The corn of wheat that fell was our Lord, and he's the one that's going to bring forth much fruit in the resurrection. He's a stone that the builders rejected. If you're here this morning and you haven't received him as your Savior, well, I'm happy to tell you they're still in the saving business. If you'll confess him, you will be saved. If you trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior, and that's what it's about. You get to choose, though, don't you? I hope you make the right decision when you choose. You choose Him to be the Lord, the Savior of your life.